Welcome back. Well, today I went to Lots Antiques again. Um, I wanted to find a new desk chair. I had a problem with my previous desk chair. Um, I have a cat. I don't know if you've noticed. And my cat is sort of crazy active wild. And he knocked the chair over a few days ago. And I'm not sure the chair is really going to hold it. I have to repair it. But I wanted to go grab a chair. So I went to Lutz Antiques, which is where I go when I want furniture. And I found a great chair. I will show you the chair. Not today. I'll show it to you some other time. Because while I was there today, I thought I would do something a little more organized in my little Lutz says, yes, there is the tail of the bad cat. He's not even ashamed of what he did, as you can see. I thought I'd do something a little more organized. And today I thought I would take some categories of furniture and just show you everything they have. Yeah, and now he is scratching the chair behind me. Audie, you're being naughty. Um... You can see that doesn't work. I can't stay mad at him. He didn't mean to damage the chair. He just jumped on it and it skittered out from under him because he jumped a little too quickly, I guess. Yes, I know. I love you. I'm not angry. Anyway, I'm, oh boy, I'm rambling today. Anyway, I thought today we would take a look at one category of furniture. Just for ideas, just for knowing what's out there. So the category we're looking at today is China cabinets, hutches, display cabinets. So when we come back. So Lutz has a huge selection. It's a very, very large place. And they specialize in case furniture. And we've talked about that. A case furniture, in short, just think of it like a suitcase. You can stick stuff in case furniture. A bookcase is case furniture. A dresser, a bureau, a chiffarobe, a wardrobe. These are all case pieces. So are hutches and china cabinets. Now, hutches and china cabinets, just for a little history, are some of the oldest pieces of furniture in existence. Um, I assume that, you know, Og the caveman sat on a rock, called it a chair. But in terms of actual built furniture pieces, Case pieces were among the first. People needed boxes to put stuff in. Eventually, those boxes turned into beautiful, elaborate trunks. And as society became less mobile, people settled down, you know, had homes. These boxes became larger, taller, turned into... Um, china cabinets, cupboards, they would call them. Um, court cupboards, in particular, are the forerunners of the china cabinet. So it's a piece of furniture that's always been with us, probably always will be with us. But our lifestyles are changing. Our, our ways of using our homes, our ways of entertaining. Nevertheless, I think we are always going to have something resembling a china cabinet. So, most of these pieces are going to be very similar. The display cabinets are going to be, you know, almost floor-to-ceiling shelving. 
the china cabinets are going to be closed cabinets at the bottom and open or glassed in cabinets at the top. It's generally in the way it shifts out. So the pieces you're going to see are all largely similar, but a whole variety of styles, a whole variety of, of different woods. And I thought we'd just have some fun with it. Take a look at what is out there. Now, this is what's out there in one particular antique store. But because Lutz deals with all kinds of styles, you're going to see a lot of choices. And for those of you who might be considering getting a china cabinet, it's a great place to start. For those of you who already have china cabinets, it's a great opportunity to compare what you have with what somebody else has to offer. So let's start off with um, an oak cabinet. This, this piece has really beautiful grain. That's what attracted me to it. Um, it has curved glass um, uh, panels around the sides. That was something that became popular in the Victorian era. You can still find these cabinets today. Curved glass is getting more and more expensive. And by the way, I, I do want to let you know, because these are among the largest pieces Lutz has. And as a consequence, they are among the most expensive. But the quality workmanship you saw 40, 50, 100 years ago is is so much better than what you can routinely find today that don't be put off by the prices because these pieces are definitely worth what they're asking. All right, let's take a look at that curved glass cabinet. This is a display cabinet and not a china cabinet. We are on a quest today. And even though this cabinet is not what we are questing for, I thought we would look around and just sort of categorize our hunts today. Ah, uh, look at this, china cabinets. And I'm going to be able to find a few more china cabinets for you. But this is a beautiful oak piece. Gorgeous grain. We've got wood shelves at the bottom and a nice glass shelf at the top and it appears to be a mirrored back. Well, as you can see from where I focus the camera, the oak grain is really getting to me. This is gorgeous. Now, I don't know how old that piece is. I do know that if you've followed me into Bedford, when I've gone to Paul's little first floor cubby, I always go there, so I'm sure you'll see that. He has a small curved glass cabinet. That is, that his piece is around the turn of the century. And that is sort of the model for all of these newer, larger, more elaborate pieces. Those curved glass cabinets were in just about every home that could afford one. They were used to uh, to store knickknacks and basically I, I guess that's what you'd have to call them pretty things that people owned and wanted to show off in general they did not house china in other words china service um, sometimes there will be a little groove in the back of the, the shelf so you could stand plates in it but these were not generally the plates you would be eating off of. These would be decorative plates. And people would have them. It's like, oh, look, here's grandma's pretty plate. And they would just load these cabinets up with stuff. Because the Victorians loved stuff. They, they were just, they lived in incredibly crowded houses. If they had a spot somewhere they put something on it. It's just, that was the prevalent decorating style. 
So a cabinet like the one we just looked at, a piece like that has a long history. And within that long, long history, many sizes, styles, shapes, just in general, it's a flat front, sometimes a curved front, and curved sides. So it's a typical piece. Um, next up, this one is interesting, uh, I think, because it's got some beautiful empire lines. Uh, and that would mean it's older. So let's take a look. Well, here we go. Here is another piece with empire lines. This is a china cabinet style. Um, that scroll work down at the bottom, that is a sort of simplified Victorian line that came out of the Empire period. 425, um, again, we've got that wood filigree work uh, that we've seen in the bookcases. Really nice piece. And again, here I'm going to go over here and take a look. See how empire that profile is. Sweet piece. Now, empire in general is the period that came just before Victorian. So, empire in the U.S. went from about maybe 1810, right through to the early 1840s, maybe even 1850. By 1860, Victorian was, and that's that sort of Rococo with all the frills and all the bells and whistles, that was firmly entrenched. Prior to that, it was the simpler and visually heavier empire style less fussy, less ornate, much more dependent on curves and simpler embellishments. By the time you hit the middle of the 19th century, everything was about carvings and scroll work and what have you. They, as I say, they were Victorian. They loved their stuff. But this piece would be older. So an older piece like this is going to have more empire influence while still having some Victorian, sort of a transitional style. Again, same woods, oak, very pretty piece. Um, next up, we have a corner cabinet. And corner cabinets, I usually pull corner cabinets aside, at least in my mind, as even if they are china cabinets and say, well, it's a corner cabinet as opposed to a china cabinet. But in this case, no. If, if it's got the glass doors on top and it's got, you know, the closed in space at the bottom, I'm going to call it a corner china cabinet. Um, corner cabinets, they have been around for a long time too. Corner space in a room is often dead space, unused space. Um, nobody like hangs out in the corner of a room. People tend to hang out more in the center of a room. Certainly that was true by the Victorian era. In the Victorian era, in a living room, there would be a large thing that looked very much like a dining table in the middle of the room. That was part of the room's furnishings. This dining table that you didn't eat at. That was because the women of the house would do all kinds of little needlework and fancy work, and they did it at the table. And people would read at the table. They didn't eat at the table. They had a dining room. But this was their living room table, and this was where they lived, around that table. In earlier periods, furniture had been lined up against the walls with large spaces in the middle. It's just how they decorated. 
So if you go into um, American homes from, say, the federal period, you know, the late 18th century, um, even going right into the early 19th century, you saw that difference. All the furniture slammed up against the wall, large space in the middle, show off that, you know, the turkey carpet in the middle of the room. But the Victorians pulled life into the center of the room, and then the corners became sort of dead space, perfect for a cabinet. So, corner cabinets have been with us for a while. Let's take a look. Here we have another corner cabinet. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to call this a china cabinet, but boy, awfully close. When they are corner cabinets, I usually class them as corner cabinets rather than china cabinets, but this one has a lot of display space. Very nice probably 20th century. Notice it's it's definitely an older style, more federal inspired, very classic, beautiful piece. And this one, I'm going to call it a china cabinet, even though it's very clearly more like a display cabinet. We've got storage at the bottom. 235 glass shelves mirrored back interesting piece definitely more on the modern style but nice and then we have a little bit of art modern which I'm going to go take a look at Um, Deco Globe Airplane. Well, we've talked about this. This is gorgeous. Uh, this is not exactly Deco, though. This is Streamline Modern. This is American Deco. Uh, it got its inspiration from the transportation industry and, of course, the Art Deco movement, but it was uniquely American pretty pretty piece mm, i gotta think about that so along with that corner cabinet there was a modern display cabinet right next to it so i wanted to show you that as well um that is an interesting design interestingly enough that's a very very old design and i mean like millennia old and that's something that sort of has come in and out of vogue in the past times when cabinets in that shape larger on the bottom tapering up on the top there are times when that's been popular times when it hasn't the original shape goes back like back to the minoan empire it, it really does. It goes back that far. Um, really unusual shape, I think. Rather reminiscent of Egyptian pyramids. I think that particular piece was second half 20th century because it had been a long time, be, uh, a long time in between iterations of that design. So I'm going to say 1970s would be my guess. Interesting piece, display cabinet, not a china cabinet, but I did want to give you a chance to see it because it was right there. Um, next up, mid-century pieces. I couldn't get prices on these for you because they were sold, but it, it reminds me a lot of the Kent Coffee pieces from the mid-century. Mid-century, they wanted a cleaner look. So, the sort of mid-century modern pieces, these are, you'll notice, no glass. 
Take a look. And while we're dealing with China cabinets, we really have to take a look at this. Not your traditional China cabinet, but in fact, it's probably more like a two-tiered sideboard, but this is a beautiful mid-century piece. Definitely fits the general category of China cabinet here. Got a little friend for it over here with drawers, the same cabinet doors, and then the shelving space above as well. And you can't have it, it's sold. Yeah, showing off your china was not a big thing in the 50s and 60s. Um, china used as decorative elements has been a popular device for centuries. It's, this is not new to us. That had been popular forever. But at some point in the mid-century, a, a cleaner look was desirable. So they closed it behind the doors. But those were china cabinets. They would have held china. They would have lived in the dining room. And it's just that you wouldn't have seen the china they were holding. Um, again, I wanted you to see them because it's a very nice, distinct style. Um, let's see what we have coming up. Oh, the cherry break front. Mm. All right, this was a very nice piece. Um, I think the piece is terrific. This piece is what I think of when I think of the classic American china cabinet. So let's take a look. Well, what we have here is described as a cherry break front. And that's just another way of saying china cabinet. Uh, drawers, doors on the bottom, glass doors with display area on the top. This one is $4.95. This is probably, I'm going to guess it at about mid-century, but going back to an older style. But this one is very large. Let's take a look at what we've got here. 1830 to 40 solid walnut piece, uh, Dutch cupboard, 1550. Well, it's pretty easy to see a lot of the sort of modified empire touches. We no longer have that first door drawer standing proud of the rest, but we do still have the, the curved lines of the wood. We have the little bun feet down at the bottom. That was a very empire feature. Simple piece, absolutely enormous. I would imagine this is unbelievably heavy. And I guess if you have a lot of china, this is what you need to show it off. And now, well, after that very traditional piece, we had the Dutch cupboard. And that was an older piece much more substantial, much, much larger. Um, interesting piece of furniture, clearly intended to store all of the family, china, whatever one would need in a dining room. Massive piece. But as you can see, it, this is not a piece that was in an elegant mansion house. It's a simpler piece, more utilitarian, um, and needed to hold a great deal more stuff. Nevertheless, beautiful piece, very interesting. I really like that one. Um, at fifteen fifty, I think it's the most expensive china cabinet I filmed today. Um, all right. Let's take a look at something very different now. And this is 
a pine cabinet. This would have been in a farmhouse. Um, it, this would have been a, a service piece. It would have been in a home that would have had utilitarian furniture, not, you know, fancy decorator furniture. So let's take a look. Well, what we have here is a painted pine cabinet. Has a certain homemade kind of look to it. Now, pine is a wood, it's a soft wood. It was invariably painted. So, this is not sort of a dreadful travesty that this wood was painted. It's just what they did with it. Nevertheless, we've got a nice china cabinet. Um, it's got a sort of shabby chic look to it. Plenty of storage room. $8.95. Now, as I mentioned when I was filming, Pine is a soft wood. It was an inexpensive wood. And most pine pieces were intended to be painted. And that was certainly, undoubtedly, what this piece was intended for. A painted piece of furniture that was going to hold the family's necessaries. But they still worked to make it attractive. It was a nice chamfering on the edges. It was a nicely made piece, but it also appeared to me to be a, a, a sort of homemade piece. Again, I wanted you to see this because it shows you the spectrum of design. Um, next up, uh, this is a corner cabinet, and I believe we have seen this before. Um, it's an interesting piece. Uh, at 1475, one of the higher end pieces, very, very unusual piece. Take a look. We have looked at this piece before, but since we are specifically looking at china cabinets today, I'm going to throw this back in the mix. Nice little decorative elements here. 950 and we have the beveled mirror it's a wonderful corner cabinet obviously designed to hold china other display items i really have to say i love these three little wood columns here nice piece tall i'm guessing six feet and again beautiful applied decoration there are strong Art Nouveau elements in that piece. Um, it's not the most Art Nouveau piece in um, Let's Antiques, but there are Nouveau elements in it. Uh, it's a wonderfully interesting piece. It's, it's large. Um, but pieces like that can hold a lot. And this, as a corner ca cabinet, was more likely to be used for decorative pieces than for the china service you would eat off of. But still, interesting, interesting piece. Uh, the last piece we are going to look at today, this is simply a display cabinet. I did want you to have a chance to take a look at this. And let me apologize in advance because I'm sure we're going over our time limit, but I had a lot of stuff I want to show you. So, display cabinet. $8.95 for this piece. Beautiful beveled glass. Very large piece. We're looking at about um, six and a half to seven feet tall. At least five or six feet long. It appears to be a more modern piece, especially looking at the hardware. Still, really impressive. Uh, and it's lighted, by the way. 
So as you can see, the difference between the display cabinets and the china cabinets are the display cabinets were probably intended just for the knickknacks, for the little uh, gugas that one would stuff in their home and show off. The china cabinets were more likely to show up in a dining room and more likely to hold the dinner service you would be eating on. All right, so I'm, I'm not going to drag this out any longer. Most of this was an opportunity for you to see all of these pieces, take a look at them, spark some ideas, and just get you a little more comfortable with this broad range of hutch, cabinet, cupboard, uh, display cabinet, etc. All of these terms that are used to describe pieces of furniture into which you would stick porcelain. That's what they're there for. All right. I hope this has been fun for you. Let me know if you want me to do more like this, where we just take one type of furniture and just run through the gamut and see how many examples we can find. Um, all right, we are going to take a look at a little slideshow on our way out, and I will see you again tomorrow morning. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.